Welcome. Here we are. It is Wednesday night. <laughs> We're a little behind. We're 40 minutes late, yeah. but who's counting? We're not. We're not. Oh, yeah. Believe me, it was worth it to wait for the lovely Ginger yep. to be in the house. Who got called away unexpectedly today to fly to St. John's and back. Her wings are very tired. She is very tired. She's sitting over there literally in her captain's uniform. She's still dialing stuff in over there. Dialing shit in. Mm -hmm. She's dialing shit and moving stuff. Yeah, she's a mover and a shaker. She hasn't slowed down yet. She's like dialing and moving. It's the worst dog fight she's ever been in. Her Her hair is still on fire. Her ailerons are like floating. Yeah. I think I saw her rudder flipping around there. Her up and downer is going up and down. (laughs) She's she's penetrating her yoke. Wow. Wow. She's pulling on her landing gears. She's going to get you under control pretty quick shortly. She's... Her her flaps are out. Keep going. (laughs) Keep going. Full flaps. Keep going. Full flaps. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. You're getting lucky tonight. Oh, I'm going to get killed later. That's what's going to really happen. Yeah. But I'm going to enjoy that. I'm I'm going to enjoy... Chris is going to enjoy that when that happens. I'm going to enjoy that when that happens. So, but the best thing about, you know, tonight is... uh, Welcome to... And there you have it, folks. Mm-hmm. There's the. This is what we do. Yeah, we have a live studio audience with us tonight. We Woo! actually do. There's like uh, special guests three, all over the place. Four, there's six people in I the know. studio with us tonight. We've got Jay Hammer and the Big Ten Door here. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> and, you got to uh, watch for this act coming up. Also, eh? yes, we also yeah. have Stevo. Mm-hmm. Our substitution production manager, because uh, mm-hmm. we were afraid that uh, the lovely Ginger was not going to get back Steve in time. In the house. And we have the ever-present friend of mine, Robbo, he is also here. Mr. Golf. Mr. Golf. Tiger Rob. Tiger Rob. <laughs> yeah. Jack Robolus. Jack Robolus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Rob Payne. Rob Payne, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rob Daly. <laughs> Can't shoot where the shit because he's standing in a puddle of spaghetti and meat sauce. Stand, can't <laughs> shoot the shit because he's standing in a pit. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Special welcome and thank you to our sponsors. Yes, sir. Boucher, Levy's Leather Straps, G&G Music, Citadel Music, Bad. Opry Music Store, Vince Mullen, mm-hmm. Reed's Music in Mount Pearl, Newfoundland, K&K Sound, Gallagher Guitars, our buddy. Murfreesboro. David Tennessee. Mathis, my buddy, called me tonight. I'm enjoying one right now. Recording King. Alvarez, Yeri, St. Louis Music. Thank you so much to you guys. Yamaha. (laughs) (laughs) Makes life better, don't they? Yes, they do. Mm -hmm. James Martin Instruments, our good friends from Kilkenny, Ireland. Joshua House Guitars, Close Guitars, Cody Guitars, Orangewood Guitars, Audio Sprockets, D'Addario Canada, The Ark, Apollo Picks, Tone Right, Epiphone Gibson, Mm -hmm. and Blue Chip Picks. We've got a new uh, customer for The Ark. Yeah, yeah, me and J- and Jay Hammer and Jay wants Hammer an wants one on an arc yeah. as well. Yeah, but th- which takes us into Capo Corner yes, territory sir, it does. because Capo, Capo, yes, Capo, 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 Capo. Brought to you by Capo. Brought to you by Capo. There you go. Because Capo, I'm enjoying one right now. Capo Corner is exciting tonight because I'm announcing the release of. I did three review videos today. Today you were a busy lad. I was a busy today. lad. I did three review videos, two of which are going to come out. Uh, one will be out probably tomorrow, mm-hmm. Thursday. The second one will be out Friday. They both concern a particular Boucher we know about. Yes, sir. And then I also just reviewed the Gallagher GA60 yeah. Rosewood Cedar. I came in on uh, the back end of that one. Oh, what a monster guitar. That was good. That's going to come out. And then next week we're going to be filming... The, the Hurst, um, uh, custom signature model Gallagher, yep. Jim Hurst guitar, um, the Epiphone, uh, a very special Epiphone. I'm not going to divulge too much about that one because it's just wicked. Hey, big things happening at Gallagher that they we are, can't even we talk can't about. even talk about. We can't even say there's big things. There's happening. There's huge things happening yeah. there. I was just Earth in a con- shattering a, yes, in a conference call with David Mathis. They are moving and shaking uh, a lot of things. Mm-hmm. There's a big partnership uh, brewing. brewing there. Yeah. And uh, I will have the test model of uh, what they're preparing yes, to sir. unleash upon the world. It's going to be cool. It is going to be cool. Yeah. Also, 
We have uh, some uh, Tech Talk with Chris stuff, uh, which will be, we're going to install this capo. On. Dang old going to be dang old installment, yeah, big old dang old yeah, banjo man. open the capo. There, we're going to install our nice thing. Shub uh, Gold dang old. fifth string capo Take that back on by a the brand new pile. banjo that I'm using, mm -hmm. which is uh, going to be yet another review. Yeah. Uh, and I, I'm hoping after that review is out and, and, and uh, up and running that they will, too, become a partner with us mm -hmm. because they make tremendous instruments. It sounds wonderful recorded. It does. Yeah. And we'll tell you more about that as we go along. And... Unnecessary. <laughs> you should enjoy some of that right now. Not too much. <laughs> It was. Dang, that's good. Yeah, it's good, son. As they say in the South, that dang, should, that should knock your hat in the creek. Dang, old, you go ahead. That'll make your tongue slap your brains out. <laughs> <laughs> and the first goddamn question Kirsten goes to, to uh, Eli Patrick. Hey, Eli. Eli Patrick. Down south. Uh, in him. Kentucky. Oh. Yep. Doing the Southern thing. Yep. He knows about all knocking his hat in the creek. Dang old, go ahead. Having your tongue slap your brains dang, out. Dang old. Food so good, make you slap your own grandma. Do you want the question? Yes, okay. we do. Go, go ahead. ahead. Jeff, do. Uh, another fiddle question this week. I've been doing some research on bows lately. What type would you recommend? <clears throat> well, uh, years ago, I would have told you to go find a really good Pernambuco stick that's well haired. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but now. You're almost better off going to buy, well, not almost, you are better off buying a, a carbon fiber bow. Yeah. Because they range in price from $75 to 5000 Yeah. And there's, in that price range, if you spend, if you spend $200 on a good, on a carbon fiber bow. You're off to the races. You're getting a good, good yeah. bow. Yeah. Yamaha makes a wicked carbon fiber. Uh, Coda. It's another company that makes wicked carbon fiber bows. Mm -hmm. uh, there's the old standby uh, Glazer yeah. that actually uses. Yeah. They're not made by Glazer, they're, but they're shit. Yeah. But they're they're indestructible. Yeah. But I would go find I would go find something carbon fiber because they're just going to last longer. They're yeah. going to they're going to last longer. They never warp. They never move. So all you have to do is every so many years you're going to have to get them rehaired. Okay. That's it. So. Tone of the carbon fiber. <coughs> gonna make it through. Excuse me. We're not interrupting, are we? That was so. Yeah, I know. Smooth. That was something that was really smooth. That thing he gave me the drink right there. It was just sounded fucking great. It was great. Okay, now I'm good now. Skip intro. Skip intro. Okay. <laughs> what were you saying about Glasser? Okay. So carbon fiber bow. Okay. How about tone? Well, that's the thing. Is each company provides a different tone? Yeah. So you have to so here's a, here's a great piece of advice for you Eli. When you go in to buy this bow, mm -hmm. take your fiddle. Yeah. Because you got to play a variety. Yeah, because it, it it's immense the importance of the of the pairing of the bow to the violin. Mm. Uh, like you might pick up a $40 bow. Okay, let me put it another way. You might pick up a $1000 bow and play your fiddle and you yeah. pick up a $40 bow and the $40 bow blows it out of the water yeah. because it's it just makes your fiddle yeah work better yeah so take your own violin into the store try all the fiddle all of the bows and make your choice and don't do it lightly like sit get a room by yourself like a like a teaching room or even go into the bathroom mm -hmm. and and just go in there alone and play the violin and really listen to it yeah and make your choice. Pick out three or four of them. Go back and forth a bunch of times. It's probably not like trying on shirts. They're going to let you take in a few. Yeah, yeah they're right? going to let you take in a few. Yeah. And, you, and, you, and that's what I would do. I mean, sometimes uh, if you're spending a lot of money, you know, I bought, I play a Coda that I paid 600 bucks for. And uh, I knew what I was buying. So it, it's a beautiful bow. Yeah. I have no problem with it. I still have my very first expensive bow that I ever bought in, uh, Jesus, nearly f 40 years ago. I bought a Reichel, which is a German bow, and I paid $1,100 for it. 
40 years ago. Mm-hmm. And that bow now is worth seven to $8,000 because obviously right. But it's a traditional bow. It is. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a hex. That's another choice you have to make is whether you're going to get a hex bow or a round bow. Right. I like hex bows because they, they're heavier and they seem to have more tone than a round stick. Mm-hmm. The Reichel is a hex bow. Like my, some of my best bows were the hex, were hex, and but my carbon fibers are all round, because they just don't need to use hex no. as a trick to get more tone and volume. Right. Yeah. So yeah, so That's good, good question. It's a great question, and go do that and let me know what you pick out. Yeah, drop me a line. We love you. Next. Um, well, there's there's some discussion about what's on your shirt, Chris. Oh, I'm, I'm in shark mode tonight. Tiny shark. It's shark, tiny shark week. So one person said salmon, and, and um, Jeff Gallant says, it looks like Morse code for I need cheesies. <laughs> <laughs> did you, I don't think they caught the salmon shake that we did no, there. Did. Salmon shake? Minnows. Minnows. Yeah. Shark. Uh, next. Uh, we've got a, a super chat oh, from boy. Blair Spineson. Mm, Blair, back hey, Blair. again. Poor sucker for punishment. Blair's a sucker for <laughs> Yes, he is. Uh, he says he was especially moved by episode 71 in Life of Music, The Last Bass Player. Oh. Oh. That's a while back. Which episode? 71? 71. 71. Yeah, that's ten, 10 before the ending. I don't know. That must. Uh, it might be about Emily. I can't remember. I can't remember. There was so many episodes. I mean, there's 81 episodes of that thing, and, and I never went back and rewatched them. Although the person that's trying to help me write the book, uh, Dave Baghdad, is adamant that we... What tuning does he play in? Sir? Oh, but, oh you're right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, he's uh, he's pretty adamant that we use uh, some of the li- Life and Music videos the as, uh, yeah, as yeah. source material. Yeah. So, But I haven't <laughs> gone back and listened to any of those things. Yeah. Blair, well, you need a new video. It's been weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, wicked. Thank you, man. You mean Appreciate Blair, it. not Larry? Blair? You said Blair Swenson. Yeah, you said Larry. Oh, no, I didn't. I said Blair. Yeah, he said Blair. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Blair, my bad. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well time. Yeah, thank you. Connects. Yeah, you slipped that right in there. Come on, so, Mom. Yeah. Uh, we got a super chat from Pilot Terry Short. Mom. Terry oh. Short. Terry Short. Short. That's got to be new. No. Uh, no. Really? Um, no. Yeah, no. Sorry, Terry. Uh, what do you know about Northern Guitar, Inherited One? Northern. I've never heard of it. Never heard guitar. of it. I'll have to look it up. Yep. I'll do that for next week. I'm sorry. Kurt next. Mm, a super chat from Ian Rossiter. Ian, Ian. Rossiter. Happy Our picking friend from Edmonton. Edmontonian picking bastard. That's what they call him up there. <laughs> Edmontonian. The, the EPB. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the EPB. Yeah. Out there near Canmore. Edmontonian picking bastard. Yeah. Betty knows what? Jeff from Canmore. Betty Crocker. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Okay. Call her. Uh, caller. <laughs> First time caller. Caller. Long time listener. listener. Yeah. Um, so the question isn't attached to the super chat, but I'll just his comment up here. It's Make actually a riddle for you. Oh boy, here we go. Oh, um, oh. What do you call an orca in a bow tie? Uh, uh, orca in a bow tie. An orca in a, a bow tie. Tux. I don't know. Yeah. Sushi. Sophisticated. Oh, oh my wow. God. Uh, we're we're not enjoying that right now. Yeah, we're he not. totally beat us. We're not enjoying any of that <laughs> right now. Puffin doesn't even like that one. Mm-hmm. What do you think, Clucky? Yeah. What about you, Shetland? <laughs> that sucked. <laughs> okay. Okay, <laughs> next. <laughs> yeah, Ian, the, or, uh, yeah. Yeah. He's a, good, he's a good picker, but he sucks yeah. at telling Real jokes. Real jokester. Yeah. He, yeah. he needs to take a lesson. Yeah, he's from a legend in his own mind. Yeah. Yeah. Legend in his own liver. <laughs> <laughs> so liver. Yeah. Ian, 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 Ian Blostiter. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. There goes another one. <laughs> <laughs> Love uh, you, Ian. <laughs> got a super chat from Mark Ashworth. Mm-hmm. Mark, how you doing, buddy? Which guitar were you playing at Stomp and Tom's 80th? It sounded great. That guitar I've talked about before. It's a... Uh, it's a it was a custom made Yamaha, an SJ thirty two or a CJ CJ thirty two I think or thirty three mahogany and spruce. No maple. Maple. It, it okay. was red. We called it Big Red. Okay. That was a that was a 
one of my prized possessions, and I, I fell on hard times years ago, and I know where it is. It was bought by a collector who actually mostly collects my instruments, and he has... That guitar is literally under glass in his condominium. Pheasant under glass. Yeah, he bought that guitar and stored it permanently in a display. Hermetically sealed. Yeah, it is. Just like it's, Lennon. Yep, it's just, it, it's, and it was one of the best guitars I've ever owned. And, uh, yeah, one of the reasons I I can't help but just but continue to sing the praises of Yamaha yep. Handmaids. Like, holy shit. What a guitar that was. Yeah. It was unbelievable. And, uh, yep, he has that one, and he also has the custom black jumbo mm -hmm. that was built for me. He has both of them. He's actually willed them back to me. Willed them back to yeah, you? Yeah, if anything happens to him, they come back to me. And, Sounds uh, like we need to do a hit or something. Yeah, we might have to go visit him. I watched Donnie Brasco last Give night. Give him a little Rob and I. in the back of the head. I'm know, feeling a little gangster tonight. <laughs> We need to go whack that guy. Yeah, monetization yeah. is over. <laughs> we... Hey, let's not threaten lives on the internet, shall we? Hmm. We just get kicked off of YouTube. Oh, no. Because we threaten somebody's life. We just said we we're going to whack well, him. Well, Chris, why don't you <laughs> shut your mouth now? I hold. Because when you talk like that, I just go ahead and follow you, even though it's completely insane and I shouldn't okay, do it. Okay, and then you just lead me on, and I'm just follow the trend. And just you, tire off, and then put you just, yeah, let's put it on right just now. Just turn it let's down, turn off your balloon, maybe knot, fade it out, and just yeah, yeah. connect. <laughs> <laughs> Love you. That was fucking brilliant. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, this is why we do string the right this here. This is why we don't even exactly. know we're live. Okay, mm -hmm. next. <laughs> uh, we have a super chat from Nathan Duarte. I know That's him. That's new. No, nope, he what? was here before. That name, I Nathan never forget Duarte. that last. Duarte. Wow. Okay. Probably We're probably saying it wrong, but we love you anyway. Oh, Duarte. What do you see in there, Nathan? Uh, hey, JP, good to hear you on String Theory. I'm planning on trading my 70s man banjo for a mandolin. Any recommendations on a good one to go for? Eastman. Eastman. Mm -hmm. Eastman. Yes, Eastman. Sir. Eastman. And also Eastman. Yeah, you might want to try an Eastman. Yeah. yeah. Go find an Eastman. Mm. There, uh, you know what? You could also try an Eastman. If he's a beginner, you might want to try an Eastman. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Go find an Eastman dealer and... Try most of the range. They, they they start, like for instance, Ginger's A style satin finish it was six hundred bucks. Yeah, that thing is Killer. deadly. I have made records with that. Thing. Yeah, and then I have the higher end ones that mm -hmm. are around two twenty two hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. I have two of them. I have an A style and an F style that are identical design. Except for the bodies, mm -hmm. and they're the best mandolins I've ever owned. Now, if he wants to push it over the cliff, he could contact James Martin Instruments. Yeah, that's that's another option is to get, yeah. is to get James he wants to, to be, build a mandolin for you, yeah. which would be just ridiculous. Yeah, but yeah. Eastman is the most readily available. Do you know what you're doing? This woman really needs a drink yep. or something. There, what? she's trying well, to she's what what happened she happened there. And she I'm well, need she a is, drink to and she's that. well deserved she of the drink. Do. She just flew a plane in here. I'm going to need a drink to replace She virtually that. drove the plane up to the house. What the hell? <laughs> so, just yeah. happened there. Maybe Eastman. if I had a Caesar right now, that would be they are, killer. They are the best. The Eastman is the best value for the money of it is. any Manlin maker so, on the F planet. So, F or A as either, your first one. Either. Perfect. Because you're going to find one that speaks to you. The A styles are just as nice as the Fs. Because like, my, my two... Mm -hmm. I just used the A on that bluegrass number I just cut a couple days ago, yeah. and it kicks ass all over the place. And the and the F would have done the same thing. It's just slightly different in tone and color. Yeah, but the A just eats a microphone. So Speaking it, of ass, yes, we haven't heard from Sudsy tonight. No, He's, there's he no was in the wet chat. Swedish hairy ass in the show yet. He was in the chat earlier, but um, wow, Eastman, East, do it. Yeah, connect, connect. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> uh, super chat from T-Bone T-Bone That a boy Here, Happy Wednesday brother uh, Just did a setup uh, and string up On a PRS acoustic electric Nice guitar Have you ever tried one of these? Nope 
Yeah, I have. You have? I oh, have. God, yeah. I've played them all. PRS. Yep. Oh, yeah. The, so, the thing about PRS is... <laughs> I'm going to get in trouble. Tell Here us. we go. Here we go. Here it happens. And we're off. Here, and Here we're off. we go. And we're off. What right. time is it? Oh, yeah. okay, yeah. Now so here's, the, here's yeah. the thing. Paul Reed Smith is one of the world's greatest electric guitar builders, without a doubt. There's mm-hmm. no question. Electric guitar builders. Yeah, that this man is is a design god. Electric guitar electric builders. Electric guitar builders. There's a theme. So the only way to get a PRS, that acoustic guitar, mm-hmm. that is worthy of his name, mm-hmm. Is to spend twelve thousand dollars on the custom made PRS acoustics like the Angelicus and the, the, the guitars that Tony McManus plays. Yes. And Ricky Skaggs. They both play these ten, fifteen thousand dollar PRS acoustic guitars. Anything below that, you might as well buy a Yamaha. It's crap. It's crap. It's crap. It's fucking crap. And it's and it's very frustrating because all it is is the, the name. It's the name. Yeah. People buy the PRS now. With, I have to qualify that statement with this. There's a new line of PRS acoustics that have just come out. That are of a different quality than this than these low. The, the but have P, you tried? The PRS, them? yes. Okay. The PRS LE, they call it, which means. Limited edition shite. Mm-hmm. So yeah. there's another level of these guitars now that are being put out, and they are impressive as hell. I don't know. The big ten. I'm not exactly sure what is the difference. Mm-hmm. I'm sure that the LE versions. Will you stop? I'm trying to. Oh yeah. Oh, the big tandoor just made me up. Oh, I guess nobody wants me to answer the goddamn question. You're just going to sit here and talk about your seizure, all you dumb prick. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Welcome to String Theory. I'm enjoying that right now. Anyway, the, P, the whatever you were saying, the new, the, on, the, new le- the new version of the PRS acoustics is out. And they cost about... Somewhere between twelve and eighteen hundred dollars. That's not bad. And they're really nice guitars. Yeah. But they're not consistent because they're not. I don't think they're made in North America. The low level ones are definitely not. They're mm-hmm. either made in China or Mexico or Indonesia. And so it's another case of please don't buy a guitar because of the name on the headstock. Yeah. Unless you're going to get the guitar that he built. Mm-hmm. Those high end from the custom yeah, shop. The high end yeah. PRS that are gonna cost you twelve, thirteen thousand dollars, they're masterpieces. Yes. Right? Because it's him. He's in charge of the shop. The shop is right there and his he, hands his, are on it. Yeah. Yeah. So you so be very careful. So if you have a good one, if you've got one of these new mid range PRS acoustics, mm-hmm. uh, and it's a good one, hang on to it. Because I think they have the longevity of the other mid-range type guitars, like the, the, the like the IBG Epiphones, mm-hmm. the L, the low L series Yamahas, like the, all these guitars that are running and, around twelve hundred bucks. That begs the question: Why take the crapshoot when you can go do an IBG, right, and get something that'll be with you for the rest of your life? Right, it's true. There right? are certain there it's are certain gu- there are certain guitars. Okay. So, for an example, I've I, when I when I just did my tour in April, the reason I know about these guitars is I stopped in numerous music stores mm-hmm. along the way in the states, and you go in these giant rooms that have fifty guitars in the walls, mm-hmm. and you can see all of the guitars that you're able to buy. You can see those. You can see L series Yamahas. You can see low low cost Taylors. Yeah. Whatever, right? The the Yamahas and those guitars are always the better quality. They're more consistent yeah. than the other, right? Yeah. And the and the IB the Inspired by Gibson Epiphones, yeah. are, and even to a certain extent, sort of the even the lower cost Gibsons that are like mm-hmm. the new ones that are out. Yeah, they're good guitars. They're coming. They're coming. Yeah. They're coming around, and they're yeah. under two grand. So. 
don't run out and get a PRS just because it's PRS. Yeah. Because it's not really PRS. It's yeah. just his name. Okay. Horse beaten. Horse beaten. But mm-hmm. anyhow, if you have a good She's one. She's a pulp. If you have a good one, yeah. please keep it. Pulpy soup. And uh, mm-hmm. if you're looking to buy that's a mega answer. expensive guitar, Done. that's the way uh, to go. Next. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we have a super chat from Dan Blumberg. <coughs> Dan who? Who? Blumberg. Blumberg. Blum- that's that's got to be new. That's got to be new. Mm, maybe. Oh, How you saying here, Dan O? Welcome, Welcome Dan. to String Theory. String Another theory. person with nothing to do on Wednesday night. That's correct. Yeah. Sorry for your luck. Welcome. Uh, he says, arthritis is a problem. Will plucking help the action on my new bluegrass goose and studio goose? Hmm. Uh, generally speaking, as somebody who who has had little to no arthritis in my hands, playing is what cures arthritis. Yeah. If you, if you don't practice every day and keep those joints working, like right now I'm having some pain in this knuckle because it's raining. Mm-hmm. Like, and that's a new thing. Over the last couple of years, it started to bother me, right? But if I play, it goes away. Yeah, and that's and that's all there is to it. These these joints are filled with fluid, and when they dry out, is when you start to get arthritis. And the way and the way to keep them drying out is to keep them moving. It forces the body mm-hmm. to lubricate them, right? Yeah. Rob so, tells me he was working out earlier today. Yeah, too. He probably, yeah. I, I yeah. don't even want to know what he's doing. Okay. Anyhow. Playing, playing is most likely the best thing you could do for your arthritis. But at the same time, as I said before, don't overplay to where you injure yourself. Yeah. You have to warm up. There's it's, a happy medium to yeah, it. Yeah, there's a warm up period. You should do things slowly at first, and then build into speed and build into difficult things, or you will hurt yourself if you're already suffering a little bit with it. But if you keep going every day. It changes. It changes the progression of the disease yeah. really, really well. So, so slow down, Rob. Yeah. Right. So take her easy yeah. on the wrist, there, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's uh, Betty Rumble. Super chat <laughs> from Roger Sykes. Hey, hey, Roger. How you doing, buddy? Happy Wednesday, brother. Uh, going back to last week, just saw a YouTube video of Tommy Emmanuel playing a Martin mm. quadruple O. No surprise with him. It sounded good. Mm-hmm. Oh right, right. So that the quadruple O is a thing, mm. yeah. Which I probably I think I've actually played. So they're like a shallow. Triple O. They're like a shallow jumbo. Yeah, that's what they are, which is really cool. And I've and I have played them, not realizing that that was uh, a quadruple. quadruple O. Yeah. They don't even use that. It's an M. They call it an M forty. An M. That's the. That's what they call those guitars but they're a quadruple o body size hmm. and i've played m32s m41s m40s they're beautiful yeah they're like a really shallow jumbo guitar yeah like and tommy emmanuel could play anything and make it sound like yeah crap. Right. yeah i mean tommy emmanuel could play the hood of a 42 <laughs> buick buick <laughs> and sound, sound better than any guitar yeah. player in the world yeah. so he could play a recycling bag yeah. Full of shite, yeah. and it would yeah. sound good. He could play a dead kangaroo. Yeah. yeah, And still get more music out of it yeah. than I ever could. With a, a with a rancid cancer invented <laughs> possum in the pouch and make it sound Why good. Why was that necessary? Yeah, he could play a sack of moldy tangerines. Yeah, and make and it, it sound still sound great. good. Yeah. yeah. Love you, Tommy. Yeah. Here next. <laughs> Uh, super chat from Stephen Baker. There's Sudzy. Oh, there's Sudzy. Yeah. Hello, my little bear friend yeah my little <laughs> flo- my little furry my floaty little friend floaty nipple bastard yeah. how you doing yeah <laughs> my little basin backed porpoise <laughs> corn back basin porpoise my little <laughs> corn nibbleted lawn dog you. <laughs> how you doing yeah my little rubber right. hairy rubber right, ducky that's, that's, hairy rubber <laughs> ducky that's exactly enough of that okay um he says i'm here in the tub enjoying the show of course Just having an off week love mm-hmm. to you all love you buddy love you too sudsy love you I'm going to enjoy this right now. Yeah, we're going to enjoy one for you right now. Oh, it's very good. 
I don't even know what's in these mm. things. These, this, the contents of this mason jar changes every week, and it's always delicious. I, I got to tell you, the is. mason jar is overshadowed by the big tandoor season. Well, see, you've you've got a pro. A pro the he big is a pro. Yeah, he's over there hanging out with uh, J Hammer. J Hammer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is a new band that's going to be uh, featured here soon. J Hammer mm -hmm. and the Piss Funnels. J Hammer <laughs> and the Piss Funnels featuring yeah. the Big Tandoor. Yeah, World Tour. That's right. When until yeah. people actually yeah. like World Tour start seeing these this yeah. band. Yeah, World Tour '98. <laughs> yeah, World Tour '98. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Connect. <laughs> Uh, super chat for me and Rossiter. Ian mm. Rossiter, back again for more punishment. Love you, buddy. Hey, Ian. How you doing this week? I uh, played a Matt and Tommy Emanuel CGP model the other day. Ooh. Felt like a deep OM. Played like butter too. Ever try one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I haven't tried a Maton, but I or a Maton or, or, or Maton. Really, I don't know how they were actually pronounce that, and I've caught shit for it online before. Mm -hmm. Someone will give me shit for it. But now, potato, sure. potato. I I am a huge fan of a company called Cole Clark. Yeah, which which is also from Australia, and uh, they 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 were together at one time mm -hmm. and split apart. And uh, there was a schism. There was a schism, a, a schism, <laughs> schism of some sort. Schism. And the Cole Clarks, good lord, those things are awesome. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, and I mean Tommy Emanuel's sound is just ridiculous. How good that guitar sounds, mm -hmm. plugged in and in a studio. Like if you listen to his records, that guitar. It's crap. It's crap. Not one, not one iota not, crap. Not one running drop of crap. No, not a single drop of crap. Necrap. Necrap. Oh, I that. think I think you might have something coming in. Oh boy. Oh, it looks, oh, it looks like oh, I got a oh, oh, there's a rival on the big, block. Big Tandor season. Cheers. Right oh, yeah. <clears throat> oh, yeah, that'll tear the face right off a goat. We're enjoying <laughs> one right Ooh. now. Yeah, that'll. You'll drink that and just oh. burn. Your soul will escape through I your asshole. I can feel the, the next fire morning. right down to the base of my crotch. Your rectum. Connect. Wow. More information than anyone needed. Okay, easy over there, Mom. <laughs> Uh, got a super chat from Mark Ashworth. Mark, how you doing, buddy? Uh, I have a Burst LS16 arriving tomorrow. Ooh. Nice. Nice one. Nice. You're going to love that. Yeah. They're just great. It's going to be rosewood back in size, probably. Yeah. I love rosewood. I do, too. But yeah. I love this I love this L16 mahogany, the one that I just picked up, which I'm going to review shortly. Mm -hmm. This thing is frigging ridiculous. The density, L L16 mahogany. The density of rosewood, though? And the way the rosewood smells when you cut in it to put a pickup I, system I know, in there, you know what is just beautiful. Rosewood is now. I'm, this is a generalization. I don't mean this as against rosewood, mm -hmm. but rosewood's blasé. It's in every guitar, right? Mm. And and it was it's, I still like to see mahogany, cocobolo, maple. Coca Bolo. Bubinga. Bubinga is like You know what I mean? Like uh, Bubinga is the end of the road. Yeah. I like I like it's the top of the hill. I like to see Yeah. Uh, especially guitar models that we know. Well wait, there's there's more than like there's rosewood, then there's rosewood. There's East Indian and there's there's East African and there's like there is a and there's right. Brazilian Brazilian rosewood which is ridiculous. It's no point even getting Brazilian That's, it's so much money. It's I know not, not worth it. But it is. It, it is. I don't believe so. I do. I've owned multiple. Let's go out and fight over it and jump off the. Uh, yeah, mezzanine. I don't think so. I've owned. I, I, now this is don't this. I'm, I'm going to have to take a stand on this. I've owned multiple Brazilian rosewood guitars in my lifetime, and they were all crap. That's Sorry. because you Sorry. rode them. That's because you rode them. Yeah. And and they're brittle. Possibly, but right? I I just couldn't. I, they were they were beautiful guitars, but yeah. I couldn't see. The expenditure of another seven thousand dollars on top of the—I'm serious. If you go, if you ask any guitar builder, any guitar builder to build you a guitar of Brazilian, mm. it's instantly another sixty-five hundred dollars. And now it is, but Brazilian it used dollars. To be. Twenty years ago, twenty years. Did you hear that? A Brazilian dollars. Wow. Twenty years ago, it was five you grand. Remember. Yeah, five grand extra for on a three thousand dollar guitar. You're paying eight for Brazilian. Mm -hmm. That's stupid. Ginger because likes it's... the Brazilian. Just saying. I'm not going there. <laughs> <laughs> Just buy cheaper wood. It's a lot better 
for you. Whatever you want to do. And Brazilian's endangered, so uh, it's like don't use. Yeah, you're endangered. Yeah, don't, <laughs> don't, don't, don't use tortoise shell picks. No. And don't use Brazilian rosewood. Yeah. And, and don't uh, pee into the wind or and, mess around with Jim. Yeah. And don't spit into a windmill. Right. And don't fall in a combine. <laughs> don't fall in a combine. What song was all, that? All yeah. good and advice, I guess. And don't throw beach balls at Chris. Because yeah. they bounce off and you can take out your eye. <laughs> can I, do I have something in my eye, by the way? Use your finger. <laughs> can you check? Oh. I know, right? Gonna, that Caesar is just I know. In your eye. deadly good. Uh, all I had to do is mix one, and he took it and it Yeah, that, that, that Caesar right there is yeah. wicked. The big tandoor killed it's us. It's necrop. It's necrop. Aye. Kernark. Uh, we have a question from Mr. Kenny Holden. Mm. Kenny Holden. Oh, yes. Good to see you back mm. again, buddy. Hello, Brother Kenny. Have what have we got? Wow. Slow opening wow, door. Somebody's coming in from a <laughs> slow, slow draining funnel. Uh, have you seen or heard of Tone Slab Picks? Tone no, slab. I have not. No. Tone Slab. Well, that sounds like Fred Flintstone territory. <laughs> tone Slab. Not Get tone the new slab. Tone Slab. <laughs> Is that like t- sound brick? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Just like. Yeah. Yeah. Audio median. <laughs> <laughs> Is that like the K-Rail Cabo? <laughs> <laughs> tone Slab. Tone Slab. Kenny, where did you find that? This pick sounds like a giant slab of shit, 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 <laughs> shit. How do we keep our prices so low? Oh, oh, no, volume, no. volume, volume. <laughs> Do you want tone, tone, tone? Out of your Try our slab of tone. Tone slab. Slab, slab, slab. Yeah. No. I don't know. I've never heard of it. Never heard of it. Is that a Moncton thing? But I will look for it. Yeah. Love so, you, Kenny. Sounds like a vagrant thing. Yeah. What do you think Kenny is on the barbecue tonight? A big slab of tone? You know, he's probably... He's <laughs> a probably, side of tone? He's probably putting all kinds of base hill lids together and cutting <laughs> picks out of them and burning yeah. together in the barbecue. Yeah, yeah it's There's Kenny Holden. Tone slab. Yeah, it's Kenny Holden thing. Yeah. yeah, it's like a layer cake of tone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a layer cake of tone. <laughs> and we love you, Kenny. I love you, Kenny. I will look it up. Mm-hmm. I don't. I. It is a pretty funny name. That's a funny name. <laughs> yeah, I can't help but make mm. fun of Tone mm-hmm. Slab. <laughs> yeah, music brick. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. You want this volume balls? <laughs> 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 yeah. I'm going to make all kinds of yeah. names for shit now. Yeah. 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 Tone burger. <laughs> tone burger. <laughs> like Kenny's hamburgers. Yeah. Yeah. Here I have a tone burger. Yeah. Action Jackson capo. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, brother. <laughs> Play guitar like Wesley Snipes kicks ass. <laughs> He's good in overnight delivery for you, Wesley Chisel Chesby. Yeah. <laughs> Always bet on tone. <laughs> Passenger 57 picks. <laughs> Wow, you are Wesley Snipes in it up here. I love Wesley Snipes. I know, so do I. Yeah. Okay, next. Uh, a question from Norman Ben. Hmm. Nor- Norman new. Ben or Norman Ben? Norman Ben. What? Norm- you still didn't Norman a Ben. Oh, Norman a Ben. Okay. Norman Aben. All right. Okay, Norman Aben. 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 I don't know. It Welcome. could be any of those things. We love you. Um, <coughs> any thoughts on Sajan products? Uh, Saj- I know him very well. He's a tremendous builder from Regina. He builds excellent, wicked mandolins and guitars, and he's a <laughs> super, right. super. Uh, I've actually had to stop in there on multiple occasions and get instruments fixed. Where is he in Regina? He's way downtown in the old part of. He's in an old, beautiful kind of brick. It used to be a factory. Yeah. Like a hundred years ago. Sachin. 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 Yeah. S A W C H Y N. Okay. Beautiful builder. And he's a super nice guy. Okay. Yep. I have his I have his mug his mug was in here. You took it out. I had his mug in here drinking coffee out of it. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Great guy. Great builder. Great uh, like uh, tech. He can set up. Mm-hmm. Any instrument, his shop is full of vintage instruments. He's a Sigma dealer. He's, he's a Martin Gibson. He does nice. all the stuff, and he always has some of his own uh, custom-made instruments in there. Es- especially his mandolins, I think, are the, are just unbelievable. I've played 
three of them or four of them now, and I just I can't every time I, never run across them out there. Yeah, yeah, he's he go check him out. Sachin right. Sachin guitars. Sachin guitars in Regina, Saskatchewan. Mm. Yeah, you can't go wrong if you're gonna go see that guy. Do it. I got a question from Rurin. That was hard. You hurt my feelings. I bet you I did. Next. Connect. Go ahead, Mom. You're on the air. Um, It's from Rurid. What? R I R R I D. Rurid. Is that a postal code? Or a place? It's probably a short form for multiple names stuck together. I don't know. Right. Okay. Give her. Anywho. Uh, hey guys, got a question about your preferred <coughs> string spacing at the nut and bridge for finger style. Hmm. Well, all of my guitars are generally one and three quarter inch nuts, and yeah. that's that's the only thing I can really w- use. Yeah. And some guitars, depending on the builder, uh, space their strings slightly differently at the saddle. Yeah. But generally, um, they're all the same. Yeah. I never use the one in three sixteenth nut. I just can't. It's so narrow yeah. that if you play down the first three frets, my fingers, the end of my fingers, are so big that they get. I can't articulate. F- it. No, I can't yeah. fret an individual string yeah. and keep the strings on either side of it open, which is really important. You're seeing less and less, n- like, yeah, everybody's standard. Exactly. Everybody's everyone there. switching to one yeah. and three quarter, like because it's so much more space and so much more. Play- and it's playability. Also, what it I think down, also right? volume and tone. Yeah. Because the strings have more space. There's more. You can put your fingertip on them more. more yeah, clamp them more, down. Yeah, yeah. You have more authority. You can get better tone. You can you can vibrato. You can do all these things yeah. without touching other open strings, which is really important if you're doing finger mm-hmm. style. Because this finger style is filled with that technique where you're playing closed string, open string, closed string. Yeah. And if your own fingers are getting in your way because the, ne- the neck is too narrow, that's bullshit. You just you can't get along yeah. with that, right? So yeah. all all the guitars that I own, I think every single one of them are one and three quarter inch nuts. Yeah, but it's just the 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 only guitars I ever see these days that aren't are like a guitar that's been had the neck narrowed for somebody with a small hand, right? And the the nut is custom cut. Yes, just like usually a a girl playing it yep. with a small hand or and they need the the nut cut closer the other thing that, that really aggravates me is guitar companies that put out the one and three or the one and eleven sixteenth or whatever sorry uh the one yes yeah, the one eleven sixteenth yeah. and even make it even make the string spacing even narrower narrower inside that to facilitate the ease of an electric player coming to acoustic right that's stupid. Why? Why? Yeah. Why would you want to have a, uh, let's say, a Les Paul spacing mm-hmm. on a flat top? Mm-hmm. The whole idea of coming to the flat top is to get more volume and more tone and more ease of play. Yeah, right. Playability. So if your neck is, if you're scrunching your fingers into the space to try to play acoustic, an acoustic yeah. guitar, it doesn't help. It's such a different animal to play because the whole articulation of the instrument is so vastly different. Mm-hmm. That it doesn't make any sense to have a flat top nope. with a with a small nut on. Exactly. Because and think about this, when you're playing an electric, like when I play my Telecaster, Gretsch not so much because Gretsch has a spacing. It's a shed, big guitar, right? Yeah. But my Tele, you don't want open strings. No. You never want them. You want to be con- in control, play one note and everything else dead. Yeah. And so. It makes sense. It's a different to, grip. Exactly. Yeah. It, you your finger your thumb is over, your fingers are touching yeah. everything, you're trying to you know when it's you play, easier to hide the warts playing an electric it, exactly. than it is playing a flat top. Yeah. You can't do it on a flat top. You have to let everything ring. Yeah. And if you can't and it's you're buzzing and bouncing off your own fingernails, yeah. That's no good. So anyhow, long story short, one and three quarter inch nuts and that's the best thing you can find for Finger style, and also there are other uh, makers like yeah, Takamini and um, Takamini for sure has an even slightly wider nut that's in between the one and three quarter and classical. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so that's the thing. Too. Try crossing that bridge from a one and three quarter yeah. to a classical guitar yeah. with a big old oh, wide yeah. neck. That's on got it. like a two inch nut. Yeah, right? you, need, like you need two hands to get. 
like you need to put your hands together to get around. Yeah. You have to have one hand on the bottom, one hand on the top. Yeah. Looks to go to call. Uh, whoa, whoa. whoa. Fast forward, fast forward. Skip into her, skip into her. Okay, thank you. Um, super chat from Stephen Baker. Who? Stephen Baker. Is that new? Stephen Baker. Is that new? Stephen Baker. I think it is. <laughs> Sudsy. Sudsy. Love you, buddy. How's the rubber duck? Uh, he <laughs> says, uh, super jealous of the drinks being handed from off screen. Right? Tell us more about them. Need the recipe for later. Uh, we can't divulge this because the, the Big Ten door mm. never tells people how he mixes his Caesars. We if have he, we if he security does, at the end of the driveway oh yeah. to keep the people. Oh away. yeah, if he if, if anybody even knew he was here doing this, he'd have to like pop a cap yeah. in there. His ass publicist told us yeah. we cannot say too much. No. Can I also, I don't think you can get the ingredients in Sweden. No for Caesar. No, you, no, can't, you get, can't. Can't get Clamato in. No. This. Yeah. Hey, do you know that Costco? Has a four pack juice, of Clamato for like twelve forty nine. Yeah. Ha ha ha. Okay, kid next. Kid next. Super chat from Mark Ashworth. Hey, Mark. Mark, how you doing, buddy? I wish Yamaha would release a solid mahogany. Mm, they have. Yeah. This is one right here. This is all solid mahogany. Solid mahogany back and sides. LL sixteen. M. A ding. Completely solid. The 16s are 100% solid back and size. As far as I know. The 6 is not. The 6, I think, is size laminate back solid. But the 16s are solid. As far as I know. There's, I, I could be wrong about that, but I doubt it. This guitar is just killer. Thunderous. Yeah, it is. It's thunderous, thunderous, thunderous. Sounds like a slab of tone. It's like a monster truck rally in your arms. That's correct. Uh, spleen. <laughs> whoa, 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 oh. easy there, big fella. Okay. Have another seizure. <laughs> Gear down. Gear down. Big uh, rig. We have a question from Graham Campbell. That's new. No. Okay, damn it. Hi, Graham. How you doing, buddy? Love you. She needs a bell. <laughs> she needs a bell. Uh, when you tour, uh, when you tour, is your preference for hard shell cases or gig bags, including semi-rigid ones? Oh, I use both, but yeah. mostly hard shells. And I get, I buy all my hard shells from Amazon. They have every maker you could imagine, from and cheap, TKL cheap, cheap. to Gator to yeah. Like I've b bought some beautiful flight Gator flight cases through Amazon. Yeah, oh, for like five hundred bucks. Yeah, and uh, I swear by them. So normally. Um, it I depends on what you're doing too, right? And it's a different world today. Airlines today allow you to gate check a guitar, True. or even carry it on. And if you can Most fit it in have. like the forward wardrobe closet, you can put it in there. Yep. But yeah. but uh, uh, the separation for me is if I'm flying or not. Right. And you do a lot of driving. I do a lot of driving. So you're in care and control of your own instruments. Right. So yeah. if I'm flying, it's always in a flight case of some kind. Yeah. If I'm not, I could well be using. <laughs> the Yamaha semi-rigid cases, mm -hmm. or if I'm playing some other guitar, Boucher, Gallagher, whatever, yeah. they're in hard shells. Yeah. But this thing here, this for instance, the 16M, that comes with a really nice, rigid, case. soft case yeah. by Yamaha. Yeah. And that's what I'll use yeah. if I'm not flying. Yeah. Because nothing's gonna, nothing's gonna happen to my guitar. I've had road. them destroyed in like hard flight case. Oh flight yeah, I've seen like carpet cases built. explode. Yeah. On it's a crap shoot when you're flying. It is. Not, I mean, now that they gate check them, so much better. Yeah. But, yeah. So, yeah. Good it, question. I would say if I had to split it up, it would be 90% hard, hard shell. 10% gig 10 bags. 10% gig bags. Yeah. 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 Cut. Next. Uh, super chat from Stephen Baker. Stephen Baker. Sudsy. He has a suggestion for the title for the show. Hmm. Uh, Better late than never. <laughs> well, he wrote it a while ago. Yeah. Just, I'm cold. I needed more hot water. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I just flew this plane Brazilian. into the side of the house. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I taxied right through the gate. Airport 22. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Leslie Nielsen's <Yeah. laughs> coming back from the dead. Cinnamon on fire. <laughs> Cinnamon on. Don't call me Shirley. <laughs> <laughs> None of those things. Go okay. Ahead. No. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, you missed it. What's he say? What? <laughs> I said full flaps and Brazilians. Full, full flaps, flaps and Brazilians. <laughs> Perfect. Wow. Not going to touch that. <laughs> okay. Any any super chest left over there? Uh-huh. Okay. Give them to me. 
Uh, we got one from Nathan Duarte. Nathan, back again, buddy. Mm-hmm. Uh, speaking of cutting and putting in pickups, I'm getting a K and K pickup in my Dobro this weekend. Mm. Only mm. ever seen Fishman's in Rezos. Uh, intrigued to hear it. You'll love it. Yeah. All of their systems sound absolutely ridiculous. So yeah, yeah, it's gonna it's, gonna, it's a whole other world. And in a Dobro too, like it's it is such a live instrument. Yep. It can be a bit of a barrel of monkeys. But this won't be. That's the beauty of K and K. They have, yeah. they are so feedback resistant. They are, but be careful with your placement in a reso. Yep, and all, it's just it's bananas. But K and K will tell you how it's done. Yep. But another thing too to consider is I always run my K and Ks through a preamp, which yep. would be my amp, my Fishman yep. Artist Loudbox. You can buy smaller pedals that have. A, what was the blue pair parametric? Par- yeah, parametric the that Empress? you and Dave used Empress to use. Empress? Or? Empress. Empress. Yeah. Yeah, but you don't even need to go that hot. You could go some very simple uh, outboard preamp that has middle bass and treble. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. And whatever. Phase, but, li- phase but, and whatever. But can be important with a rezzo because it's just such you, a live you might instrument. Need, you might need some outboard piece of gear between you and the soundboard yeah. that will make your EQ. Tame it ma- a little yeah. bit. But otherwise, I mean... You just can't go wrong with those things. No, K and K's. Yeah, it'll best. be it'll be a pretty easy install. The best. Yep. Uh, I got a super chat from Donald Fisher. Donald oh. Fisher back again. Happy Wednesday. You know that name. Uh, JP, you're playing to a solid. Uh, so, sorry, a sold out crowd tomorrow night in Sackville, New Brunswick. I know because I couldn't get tickets. Sweet. Uh, what's your set list for tomorrow night? My wife and I will catch you another time. I have no idea. It's a Gunning and Cormier <laughs> show, and Dave writes the sets. So mm-hmm. there you go. Yep. Dandy. Be surprised everyone. Um, what do you think I should play? Oh, connect. Say it. Connect. Super chat from Dan Tube One. Hey Dan. Dan Tube. Holy jeez, haven't heard from you for a while. Yeah. Been Welcome back, buddy. Uh, perhaps Stephen Baker should partner with Clam Disaster to become the kingpin importers of Kamada juice into Sweden. Hail Caesar. Oh. <laughs> Hail Caesar. Vandalay Industries goes to Van- Sweden. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Can actually anybody else? <laughs> what? Where? Why are you in such a rush? Yeah, we got nine minutes left there. Yeah, nine we minutes. Don't? Yeah, we do. We started late. I got the the counter right here. Yeah. I got the man to repair. I spent again to play player. I pet the fairbur bag player. Hey, hey. What? Calm the fuck, okay? Yeah. We're not done yet. Play us a little one of your little little ditty ditties or something. Clam does that this guitar. So new and the factory strings on it. M. Yes, sir. By the fine folks at Yamaha Music. They yeah. make everything. You can't go wrong. Motorbikes. You can't go wrong. Canoes. Outboard motors. Outboard motors. Guitars. Horns. Fiddles. Bows. Amplifiers. Skidoos. Mixing boards. Speakers. 
Yeah. Tuners. <laughs> <laughs> well, next, next. Uh, Sorry. Got a question from Lay. From who? Leg? Lay. L e h. Lee. Lee. Oh. Lee. 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 Yeah. The question is: Yari Honduran, Adirondack top versus all mahogany. Which one, if only one? Adirondack. Adirondack top. versus mahogany. Versus yeah. all mahogany. Which one, if only one? Well. You've posed a difficult question because I love both. Mm. So Adirondack is going to sound absolutely ridiculous in any guitar you use it in. Yeah. But most most in a dreadnought. It's going to be brighter. All mahogany is going to turn a small body guitar into a an atomic bomb. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So it's like, but I it's not going to be as articulate or bright. No, it's yeah. going to be warm and fuzzy and yeah. beautiful and. Silky highs, wool and lows. Yes. Yeah. So that's like as I uh, as I'm just demonstrating. Yeah. This mahogany, and for instance, my Yeris mm -hmm. that are forty year old Honduran mahogany. Mm -hmm. Those guitars are just supernatural. They're so huge and fat and beautiful, and so. But they don't have Adirondack tops. They just have regular Engelman or, Engelman or, or Sitka. Yeah. But it doesn't matter because the, the mahogany is so good. It doesn't matter if you you could put a carpet on I the top. I love the, the it would sound great, right? But the character of an Adirondack top. I do too. It's it, it, the the. It's like there's a party in your mouth and everyone's invited. Yeah, but you also also mm -hmm. can't go wrong with all mahogany. No, because it's <laughs> there's just so much. Remember the monkeys? So you much just came in the barrel and yeah, you yeah, and you that's an Adirondack top yeah, yeah, sound wise. You just keep hooking them. Yeah, they just keep. That's an up. Adirondack top yeah. sound wise. And the mahogany is going to be the 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 special delivery package that comes in the gate. And it's Overnight just like, delivery. Poof. Yeah, yeah. And you're going to have the warm, metaphors make fat tone. Yeah, and it's playability. Controlled. Playability. It's, it's controlled, right? And, and it will last an age better than Adirondack. It will, because the it Adirondack will. is going to it's going to go a little. It'll walking. get a little weird after yeah. years and years and years, right? But you the mahogany, really got to take care of it. You do. Mahogany's yeah. tough as shit. You can just yeah. beat the crap out of mahogany and it will yeah. never go down on you, right? Yeah. So, so, so it's important to understand that when you're talking about tone woods, which woods actually last yeah. the best. Mahogany, maple, and then I would say rosewood last. Rosewood can crack a lot easier than yeah. anything else, right? The Adirondack so. is... is it's forgiving in a way, but it's fussy in a way too, because it, it, it expands and contracts so much. It does. It's easier to crack. Mahogany doesn't. It doesn't. It's way more stable. Way more stable. Yeah, absolutely. So good question, but I mean, mm -hmm. you're talking to a guy that loves both things, yeah, yeah. so it's like, yeah, you're talking yeah. to a guy with seventy-five guitars, so yeah, and yeah. no time. Okay, yeah. next. Uh, we have a super chat from Jamie Reed. Jamie hey. Reed, Jamie. how are you doing there, buddy? Uh, happy Wednesday. Do you yes, have sir. copyright advice? Copyright advice? Mm -hmm. hmm. I do not. Uh, there's no advice to be given on copyright. Copyright occurs at the moment of your creation of whatever you've written. Mm -hmm. It cannot be taken from you. Uh, there is no record ever in the history of Canadian music where copyright has ever been challenged, ever, in the history of the country. So all you have to do when you write a song, you need to join SOCAN, Yep. You need to register your songs. You'll be pl paid for radio play. Get your mechanicals. Of and it. your mechanicals. And that's mm -hmm. all you need to do. Copyright is not... Copyright is not the issue it was... Years ago. 50 years ago. Yeah. Right? You had people in this industry that were so crooked that they were gonna they would attempt to, to take your copyright away from you mm -hmm. through publishing, like bad publishing and record deals. Yeah. Today, it's, it's just not... It, like... You'll even have people say, "Well, you write the lyrics down, or put it, or you make a recording and mail it to you yourself." You don't have to. You don't have to do that. That's bull crap. That's all bull. Yeah. As soon as you write it down on paper and put it on a voice recorder on your phone, yeah, there's your copyright. Yeah, because there's a time and date stamp on that, and no one knows it but you. Well, and there's so many more plays, but there's so much more exposure and so many more ways of keeping track of it. Right. right? So yeah. as soon as you as soon as you register the song with SoCan, yeah. and it's not challenged, and it never will be because no one's ever challenged a song in SoCan or PRO mm -hmm. or any of the associate like SoCan used to be PRO used to be ASCAP used yeah. to be, it's 
for the last 60 years that they've operated in Canada, no yeah. one has ever challenged the If song. you're writing a tune today, get it out online as quick as you can. Yeah. Because then it's 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 known that it's yours. Exactly. And and you can never be challenged. You can never be challenged, no. And so your, your copyright is safe no matter what you do. Yeah. Just get it out with SoCan. It's, Talk it's, to it, people like Easy Song Licensing yeah. to put your catalog with them so they can control mm -hmm. and collect your online royalties for other people using you on YouTube or... Yeah, that's wherever. how you do it. Yeah, and it's simple. It's so simple. It's so Not easy and like free. The old days, right? No, the yeah. old days you had to have a publishing house. Yeah, like I own my own publishing house because I felt well. I didn't well, felt, you have to. I didn't feel. I yeah. knew at the time. Yeah, I legally had years ago. You'd be dealing with unscrupulous people who mm -hmm. would say, "Okay, well, we want to sign you to this deal, but you have to give us your publishing." And you would say, I would then say, fine, you can have my publishing. I own it. So you're only getting 25%. Mm -hmm. Whereas if I didn't own the publishing, they'd get 50. Yeah. Right? So what, you're, it, what you'll be doing at that time is you're, you, as a publisher, would own 50% of the song. That leaves the other 50% open for negotiation. Yeah. The, half of that would go to the label. If it wasn't published, they'd get 50% of the whole song. Yeah. You'd lose half your royalties like that yeah. just by signing your name on something. So Today it's, it's easy. It's easy now. Yeah. There's, like, there's just so, everything in the business, including YouTube, I, I can't commend them enough about how diligent Google is uh, for paying artists their royalties for, for online use. Even this song here, which is called Slobbering Bastard Jig, Jig. The, the the flop mouth arsehole hornpipe. Look at the angle. Why are Did you she throwing throw things something at me? At me? <laughs> what the hell, Ginger? Apparently. Angry pilot. Anyhow, your copyright is safe. Keep writing. Safe Connect. with us. <laughs> uh, super chat from Jeff Galant. Monsieur Jeff Galant. Galant. We were we were in the bright red mud the other night and we didn't see Mr. Galant. Thank you. Well. Okay, yeah. We didn't see him the other night. What the Did you hear that fucking note there? I, I, yeah, I heard that. <laughs> Why didn't we see you, Jeff? We were over there. Yeah, what the hell? We man? were in your hood. We were What's waiting you get? for What's you. What's he got? What's he saying? Uh, it says, evening, folks. Hey, Big John. We're going to get some master guitar head stuff. Master guitar head stuff? Yeah. Well, oh, I'm you sure you will. Head. Now that, now that we're, we've just content. today started going back into the filming and, and, you know, servicing the YouTube thing. So, yeah, you're going to, you're going to see stuff. Thing. Yeah, we did. <laughs> yeah, you did. You will. Love you. For sure. <laughs> Connect. You're in a rush again. No, I'm not. He's doing the thing where he's, he's trying to rush. wrap yeah. shit up. Is he in a rush? He's in a yeah, rush. he's a bit in a rush. <laughs> uh, we have a go. super chat from Philippe de Oliveira. Whoa, what? Philippe de That's a good name. Yeah. I'm definitely mangling yeah, it. Yeah, try he's and from pronounce Brazil. it. Why don't you? From Brazil. Holy uh -huh. shit. Say it again. Welcome. No. Um, <laughs> hey, JP, I'm a big fan of yours. Regards from Brazil. Hmm. Thank you very much. That's it. You just got a Brazilian. That is a great. No, seriously now. Mm, you just got a that's, Brazilian. That's no, no, easy now. <laughs> that's a, that's a, I'm that's very moving. That was a Brazilian. That's a, kudos. That's a country. That was a Brazilian kudos. That's a country that I've I've never I've never known that I was recognized in at all. There you go. So that's pretty friggin' cool. Thank mm. you very much for that. I I don't know if I'll ever get to Brazil. I would love to. I don't think I'll let you. Okay. Anyhow, love you. Thank you. Good. It really means a lot to me. Thank you. Good. Next. Uh, there's a super chat from Dan Bloomberg, but I don't what? see... What? Uh, Bloomberg? Dan Bloomberg. Dan Bloomberg. Dan Bloomberg. He, he messaged before. Um, I don't see an actual question. Okay. Okay. So our question for the giveaway is a good one tonight. All right. We're looking for number 37 and 38. People, 37 and 38. Yeah, two more, and we're going to announce the prize package. The last 10, wow. the last 10 names come on. We're it's, almost it's, there. And it's going to be wicked. Yeah, we're gonna. it's going to be before Christmas. We're going to have the prize go out. Mm -hmm. So the question is tonight. The question is tonight. Just, I want to put some music on while we're doing this. Oh, you got to put a little... Gonna we'll put, put our we'll atmospheric put our, music. We'll put our theme music on again. This is my uncle Joe actually playing this. Me and yep. Joe playing this. 
So this, the, the question tonight is... Tell us. What city did Ginger fly in from tonight? Oh. Because I oh. said it. I said it. You did say I it. I did say it. What? You guys stop waving for... <laughs> yeah, you're right here. Stop it. What What fine city? Which fine city did, Which fine did Ginger city? fly her little plane? Play me that song like Buddy Higgles. Easy now, easy Bud now, Higgles, easy Bud. now. You're you know, the away. one that goes do, do, do. You're going to give it away. No, that's okay, just the a clue. Already here in order. All right, see, the answers are already there. We got uh, we got answers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, who is it? Uh, so the first one with the correct answer was JJ. JJ who? Uh, J. J. I don't think there's JJ on there. JJ from J. Yeah, JJ. All right, JJ. I don't know who they are, but I'm just gonna put JJ. Yeah. You're number thirty-seven, buddy. Yes, sir. If you want to send us an email, jpcormier38 at gmail.com. Please uh, shut up over there for fuck's sake. Yeah, what are you guys doing over there? JJ, send an email to jpcormier38 at gmail.com. We'll put you on the list. You're on the list now, number 37. Yeah, you're right there. And who's number 38? Uh, Buzz Gould. Buzz Gould? Wow. Where are these? G-O-U-L-D? That's yeah. not on there either. Buzz Gould. You, sir, are number 38. Mm-hmm. 37, 38. Buzz Gould, send an email to jpcormier38 at gmail.com. You can, uh, we're just going to put, put you aside in the file there. Yep. Can you and you will be part of the huge bay. draw. That happens yeah. before Christmas. That's good. Correct answer. Torbay. What? Torbay. Yeah. Kenny says Torbay. I dare you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so, okay. Torbay. She flew in from St. John's, Newfoundland, which... Is known as the Torbay Airport. Wow. All right, it's Odin Torbay. Oh, right. Okay, cool. All right, cool. All right. We're good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Here so, we go. There you go, boys. Yeah. Put out. Turn up the bottom of the music. It's it's modern. Listen, listen, to Uncle Joe. Play the slow yeah. air. He was the man. I have his yes, fiddle. Yes, sir. You do. I do have his fiddle. He was a great player. Right. Cheers. Cheers to you, Ginger. Good work. Thank Beating you for that Ginger. Thing like a horse yeah. coming home. Yeah, <laughs> she rode that thing like she stole it. Windshield wipers up. Mm. <laughs> yep. The, the big tandoor, Jay Hammer. Thank yep. You. Stevie, Stifler, Rob, and Robbie. We love you. Yes, we sir. always love you. It's great to have you Our here PA every Wednesday. and continuity U- manager. Uchi, PA and continuity. Yeah. We love you. The whole gang here. We'll see you next Wednesday night, boys and girls. Have a good week, everybody. Stay love safe. Love you. Thank you. Look for the new reviews. Yes, sir. <laughs>